Sand is the hidden foundation of our civilization, present in concrete, glass, silicon chips, and asphalt. It's in the buildings we live and work in, the roads we travel, and even the technology we use every day, from the tallest skyscrapers to the smallest microchips. Sand is everywhere, quietly supporting the modern world. We use about 50 billion tons of sand every year, more than any other natural resource except water. But despite its abundance, we're running out of the right kind. Not all sand is created equal, and the specific grains needed for construction are becoming alarmingly scarce. Desert sand shaped by wind is too smooth and round to bind well in concrete. Instead, we rely on sand from rivers, lakes and oceans, sand with rougher edges that can lock together to form strong structures. This demand puts immense pressure on natural habitats. Relentless extraction has pushed fragile ecosystems to the brink of collapse. Rivers are being dredged, wetlands destroyed, and coastlines reshaped. In some places the fight over sand has even sparked violent conflicts, as communities and criminal groups battle for control. Every year, we use enough sand to build a wall around the planet, 27 meters high and wide. Imagine a barrier encircling the globe, built from the very grains beneath our feet. The scale of our consumption is almost unimaginable. This insatiable demand has created a multi-billion dollar industry, stretching across continents. Both legal and illegal supply chains feed the world's hunger for sand, often with little oversight or regulation. In some regions, powerful sand mafias control the trade, operating outside the law. Their activities destroy environments, displace communities, and threaten the safety of those who stand in their way. As easy sources vanish, miners dig deeper, stripping riverbeds, gouging coastlines and leaving devastation in their wake. The scars left behind are visible from the air and felt by those who depend on these landscapes. Removing sand disrupts natural water flow, increases the risk of both floods and droughts, and undermines vital infrastructure like bridges and roads. The consequences ripple far beyond the mining sites themselves. Along coasts, sand mining strips away natural barriers, accelerating erosion and putting entire communities at risk. Homes, businesses and livelihoods are threatened as shorelines recede and protective dunes disappear. The very material that builds our cities is making them more vulnerable. A dangerous paradox we must confront. As we continue to shape our world with sand, we must ask, at what cost to our environment, our safety, and our future? Not all sand is created equal. Despite the endless seas of sand in deserts, most of it is surprisingly useless for building our cities. Desert sand is too smooth and round for construction, a result of being shaped by relentless winds over thousands of years. In contrast, river and seabed sand, shaped by flowing water, has jagged, angular edges. These rough grains interlock tightly, creating a strong, stable matrix when mixed with cement, essential for making durable concrete and sturdy buildings. Desert sand, on the other hand, is worn down by wind until it's almost perfectly spherical. These grains are too slippery and don't bind well, resulting in weak, unstable structures that can't support the weight of modern construction. That's why even countries surrounded by deserts, like those in the Middle East, must import construction-grade sand from distant riverbeds and seabeds. The right kind of sand is so valuable that it's shipped across oceans to fuel urban growth. The irony is striking, Dubai's iconic skyscrapers rise dramatically from the desert, yet they're built with sand brought in from faraway places, not the sand beneath their feet. The chemistry of construction matters too. Desert sand smoothness and roundness prevent cement from bonding properly, making it impossible to create the strong, cohesive concrete needed for safe buildings. Using the wrong sand isn't just inefficient, it can be disastrous. Weak concrete can lead to catastrophic failures, putting lives and infrastructure at risk. So, despite the vast deserts covering much of our planet, the world relies on fragile aquatic sources for the sand that builds our cities, roads and bridges. This surprising geological reality has created a booming and often destructive global trade in the right kind of sand, shaping the skylines of our modern world. China's rapid urbanization has been nothing short of astonishing, transforming sleepy towns into bustling megacities almost overnight. Towering skyscrapers, endless highways and sprawling rail networks have sprung up at a pace the world has never seen before. This explosive growth created an unprecedented demand for sand, the hidden foundation of modern construction. 
Sand is essential for making concrete, glass and asphalt, materials at the heart of every new building and road. In just a few short years, China consumed more cement than the United States did during the entire 20th century, a staggering statistic that highlights the scale of its building boom. Skyscrapers, roads, bridges, and high-speed railways all required massive amounts of sand-based concrete, fueling a relentless appetite for this seemingly ordinary resource. As demand soared, local sand supplies quickly ran dry, forcing miners to dig deeper and venture into riverbeds and lake shores in search of more. Sand extraction soon became a modern-day gold rush. With little oversight, unregulated operations sprang up everywhere, often ignoring environmental safeguards in the race for profit. The Yangtze River, often called China's lifeblood, was especially hard hit. Thousands of dredging boats tore through its waters, scooping up sand day and night. The environmental consequences were devastating. Riverbanks collapsed, habitats vanished, and water quality plummeted. Yet, for many, this was simply the cost of progress. At its peak, China was consuming over half of the world's entire annual sand supply, a level of use that experts warned was completely unsustainable. Eventually, the scale of the crisis became impossible to ignore. The government stepped in, launching investigations and seeking out alternative materials and methods to reduce reliance on natural sand. China now faced a stark choice, innovate and find sustainable solutions, or risk watching its environment, and the very foundation of its cities, crumble away. Building a high-speed railway across the Gobi Desert meant battling shifting sands, engineers pioneered straw checkerboard grids, simple, effective barriers that stabilized dunes, these grids slowed the wind, trapping sand and anchoring the landscape. The grids also retained moisture and organic material, creating micro-environments, Drought-resistant native plants were introduced, their roots binding the sand further. Within a year, barren dunes transformed into stable, green corridors. The railway was protected and desertification began to reverse. This project showed that working with nature, not against it, can yield miraculous results. The Gobi Railway stands as a model for sustainable infrastructure in harsh environments. China's sand demand devastated Poyang Lake, its largest freshwater lake and a vital sanctuary. After a Yangtze River mining ban, dredgers swarmed Poyang, making it the world's largest sand mine. Hundreds of vessels extracted millions of cubic meters, drastically altering the lake's shape and water flow. The chaos destroyed habitats for endangered birds like the Siberian crane and oriental white stork. Rapid drainage shrank feeding grounds, threatening wildlife and local livelihoods. Satellite images revealed a scarred, sediment-choked landscape. Poyang's destruction forced China to confront the true cost of its construction boom. Facing crisis, China revolutionized construction by embracing manufactured sand. Artificial sand, made by crushing rock, became the new standard as natural sources dwindled. The government supported the shift, investing in technology and setting quality standards. By 2011, manufactured sand supply surpassed natural sand for the first time. Production soared, and reliance on river and lake sand plummeted. In 2010, natural sand was 80% of supply. By 2020, just 21%. By 2025, manufactured sand is nearly 90% of China's aggregate market. This shift decoupled development from environmental destruction. China built a new, sustainable supply chain, one of the century's great environmental success stories. The nation could keep building while giving its ravaged landscapes a chance to recover. Making artificial sand is a modern engineering feat. Large rocks, granite, limestone, basalt, are crushed in powerful machines. The process involves multiple crushers, reducing boulders to gravel and sand. Special machines like vertical shaft impactors shape the particles for ideal, concrete use. The sand is screened and graded for precise size and quality. Excess dust is removed, ensuring a consistent, high-quality product. Manufactured sand can be tailored for specific construction needs, unlike inconsistent natural sand. The process even uses mining waste, turning spoil into valuable resource. China's mastery of this process solved its sand crisis and improved construction quality. China's transformation from sand crisis to sustainability is a global blueprint, the key strong policy, regulation, and investment in new technology, bans on river mining and crackdowns on illegal operations forced innovation. Other nations must recognize the true cost of sand extraction and enforce robust protections. Investment in artificial sand technology and recycling can create a circular economy, 
China's story is one of adaptation and resolve, rewriting the rules of resource management. As global demand for sand grows, the world faces a choice, destroy, or innovate. China has shown a sustainable path forward is possible.